Well, welcome back to NRM 435, GIS Analysis. In this session, we're going to use a model to estimate quantities from points. And the first model we'll use will be linear regression. So what we'll do is first we'll create 100 random points random in a space between 0 and 100 in the X and 0 and 100 in the Y. So we'll use the Create Random Points tool and we'll say the upper top is 100 in the Y and the rightmost in the X is 100. And I name my output feature class Ran Points 100 because we'll have 100 random points and then OK. So we have our 100 random points. Since it's random, your random points will be in slightly different locations. The next step is we'll create proximity polygons around our random points. So we'll use the Create Thesen Polygon Geoprocessing tool to do that. So we have our proximity polygons around each random point. The next step is let's add a field measure A and measure B, which will be fictitious fields of some measurements. And we'll, they'll be double precision because we're going to do quantities. So we'll add a field and it'll be double precision. And we'll have two fields, measure A and measure B. Okay, so let's assign using the field calculator, measure A will be equal to the area of our proximity polygons. And measure B, right mouse click field calculator, will be the perimeter or length of our proximity polygons. Okay, so then what we want to do is we'll transfer measure A and measure B back to our points so we can use the intersect tool to transfer the information about our polygons to our points. So we'll intersect our random points with our proximity polygons. And let's name this as points measures. So that will be our output. And then we can remove our original layers. So let's assume we have these points. And for each point, we have a measurement. It may be uh, tree diameter and tree height. It may be, you know, whatever it is, it's just fictitious. And what we want to be able to do is predict measure B as a function of measure A. So to do that, we're going to use a tool called ordinary least squares. And we assume there's a linear relationship that as measure A increases, measure B will also increase. So let's sort this ascending. So for example, here we've got a 12 and an 18, a 13 and a 15. We have relatively small values. And if we go sort descending, here we have 319 and 67, 308 and 75. So as measure A increases, so does measure B. We can show this in a scatter plot. So if we go to create a graph, and it'll be a scatter plot. So the Y field is what we're trying to predict is measure B. And we're going to try to predict that as a function of the X field measure A. And don't show us a legend. So here's the relationship. And it does increase. So we're going to model that using a straight line relationship. So that's going to be a tool called ordinary least squares. So with this tool, we're assuming given measure A, our model will predict measure B. So my output points I called model predictions. And then let's output to a report file a PDF. So I'll put this in NRM 435, and I'll call this regression report because it uses linear regression as the model. And then we could execute this geoprocessing tool. OK, so let's start by looking at the PDF that was output to CNRM 435. So here's the PDF. 
So the model is statistically significant. We're given the p-values, and these are the model coefficients that we could use to calculate for any measure A, what's the predicted measure B to be. And then basically we have uh, in our report how many points this was based on a metric called R square, which is how well does that straight line fit the data, et cetera, all the way down to here's a plot of our straight line through the data. Now, if we go back to R, here it's showing us the standardized error called a residual error. So this would be all the points where the error was minimal plus or minus a standard deviation. I'll symbolize that as a large green circle. So these are points where the model really worked well. These points are where the model did not work very well. So I'll symbolize that as a red circle. And here's a point where the model did not work well. I'll symbolize that as a blue circle. Okay, so we could look at these by opening up the table. Here we have our measure B and here we have the model predictions. And then we have the residual error would be the measure minus the estimate gives us the residual error. So let me uh, move measure A all the way because we're not working with measure A, we're working at measure B right now. So here the error is minus 0.3 and if we could zoom in on that, so that's one of the symbols where it was symbolized as very low error. So then if we right mouse click sort descending, here's one where the measure was 42 and the model only estimated it to be 32. So we were off by 10. So if we zoom in on that, that's the one that I had symbolized as a big red symbol. So basically for every point, we have how well the model predicted measure B as a function of measure A. And then these big symbols were, were either really over predicted or under predicted. And the green marker symbols are where the model really worked fairly well in predicting measure B as a function of measure A. Okay, so I'll remove our ordinary least squares predictions. And let's symbolize our point measures using measure A. So if I go to properties, symbology, quantities, and then my value field will be measure A. Okay, so we have different quantities for measure A. The other type of modeling we can do is spatial interpolation. And there's two common ways to spatially interpolate quantities. And one method is the inverse distance weighting method, where basically it looks at, for every cell, look at all the points close to that cell, and then basically interpolate linearly. So that's a method called IDW, or inverse distance weighting. And in order to use this, we have to have a spatial analyst extension because that will produce grid cells. So what you have to do is go to Customize, Extensions, and make sure you have the spatial analyst extension checked on. Okay, so IDW interpolates a raster from points using an inverse distance weighted technique. So our points are our point measure and the value field is measure A. And then we're going to output to a raster and we'll give that raster a grid cell size of one meter. So you remember our points range from zero to 100 in the X dimension and zero to 100 in the Y dimension. And then we have this power parameter and that controls the significance of surrounding points. So the higher the power results in less influence from distance points, and the default is two, and the most reasonable results are obtained using values from 0.5 to three. So we'll just stick with the default. And then we'll look at the number of points is 12. So look at the surrounding 12 points surrounding each one meter cell. 
and then we'll output that to a raster called IDW. So this will be IDW, and it's going to be cells. And the cells will be one meter by one meter because we specify that here. So here's the resulting one meter by one meter raster with our predictions of what the measure A quantity would be anywhere in this neighborhood. So then we would ask the question, well, how well does this surface represent this, these points? So to do that, we could say, okay, for every point, go and get the predicted value from our IDW raster. So to do that, we'll use the geoprocessing extract values to points. So for our, each point, go to our predictions, which is a raster, extract the raster value. And I'll call this IDW validation. So then that creates a new point where we have the original measure A and then what the IDW prediction was. So I'm going to delete measure B because we're not working with measure B in this example. So here we get fairly similar values. So what we want to know, what is the error? So we'll add a field for error. And our error is going to be equal to the actual measure A at the point minus what the IDW interpolation was. So that's our raster value. So you can see we have fairly small errors and if we look at the statistics, the average is 0 0.006. So the method worked really well in terms of predicting the measure A at that, those locations. The other method of interpolating quantities across the landscape from points is a method called Krieging. So Krieging interpolates a raster surface using a geostatistical technique called Krieging. So we'll input the same points and the Z value is measure A. And then our output surface, we'll call it Krieging cells. And then just like before, we'll output our raster to be one meter by one meter cells. And just like before, sample would be go and look at the surrounding 12 points that are closest to each cell and then just OK and that will create our raster from Krieging interpolation. So here's our raster from Krieging interpolation. So then just like before what we'll do is we'll use extract values to points to get what was the Krieging estimate of measure A at each location. And using the Krieging interpolation method, the average error was negative 0 0.007. So this method is an alternative method, and sometimes it works better than IDW, and sometimes the IDW method works better than Krieging. It all depends on how the point quantities are distributed in space.